everyone. Welcome to a video on an interesting concept called emotional intelligence with me Dr. Sunanda Roy. Conventionally, IQ or intelligence quotient was considered the best predictor of giftedness. IQ is a number used to express the apparent relative intelligence of a person and to measure one's ability to learn or understand. So, it deals with the logical aspect of our brain. However, over the years, it has been observed that a person with high IQ need not necessarily become successful in life. This led to looking at intelligence as a wider concept leading to various aspects of intelligence like emotional intelligence, which deals with emotions. Emotional intelligence is measured as emotional intelligence quotient or EQ. So let's try and understand this fascinating concept called emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence was introduced by two university professors from America, Dr. John Mayer and Dr. Peter Salovey in the 1990s. However, the credit of popularizing emotional intelligence goes to Dr. Daniel Goldman. This professor from Harvard University wrote about EQ in his book titled Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than IQ in 1995. According to Mayer and Salovey, emotional intelligence is the ability to perceive emotions, integrate it in thought, understand emotions and manage emotions for emotional and intellectual growth. Let's try and understand emotional intelligence through a model which was given by Dr. Daniel Goldman regarding emotional intelligence. Daniel Goldman has given a model which has five domains or competencies. Let's look at each of these competencies to understand the concept of emotional intelligence. The first competency is self-awareness. This means recognizing which emotions one is feeling and why. Here the person is able to monitor his or her feelings which affect their performance. Thus, the individual is aware of his strengths and limitations and is open to feedback from others. Being able to monitor our feelings becomes very important, especially while taking sound decisions. It is wisely said that one should not take decisions when one is angry. Most of the times, such decisions aren't the correct ones and we regret making them later. The second component or competency is self-regulation. People having this competency are able to handle their emotions during any stressful situation. They are flexible, creative and adaptable in managing multiple demands. It should be noted that emotions need to be expressed. However, how they are expressed is crucial. These people express their emotions but do it in a socially acceptable manner. They have strong ethical values and are very focused and stay calm in spite of stressful situations. Those lacking this competence tend to spend a lot of time in battling feelings of distress. Whereas those who have this competence can bounce back soon from any failure as they are able to control their emotions. The third component is self-motivation. This deals with the ability to channelize one's emotions to achieve goals. They consider setbacks due to manageable situations rather than personal limitations. So they are more optimistic and positive towards attaining their goals. These people are highly goal and result oriented. Empathy is the fourth component. It means being able to put oneself 
in others shoes hence the person is able to feel or experience the emotions of others now there is a difference between sympathy and empathy in sympathy a person feels pity for others as if he is superior than others whereas in empathy the person is able to put himself in the place of others and feel others emotions such people are sensitive to the needs of others and are ever ready to help they readily acknowledge and reward other people's strengths and achievements hence they have high people skills the fifth and last component is social skills individuals with this competence are able to handle relationships very well as they are able to influence other people's emotions these people make good leaders as they guide others to improve their performances while giving them responsibilities they are very good with communication as they are very diplomatic they are able to handle difficult people and tense situations very effectively so they are good at conflict management and consider diversity amongst team members as an opportunity rather than a barrier therefore these people are popular and are good team builders promoting a friendly and cooperative climate if you look at this competency you start to realize why people who are high in emotional intelligence succeed in life irrespective of not having extremely high iq these five domains or competencies can be put into two major competencies the first three competencies that is self awareness self regulation and self motivation are related to personal competencies as they focus on self the next two that is empathy and social skills are social competencies as they involve others what is even more interesting is that these competencies have a hierarchy you need to be aware of your emotions to be able to regulate them and motivate yourself by channelizing them towards your goals also you can empathize and relate to other emotions only if you can understand your own emotions so you need to master the personal competencies before you go in for the social competencies and finally you can influence others emotions and develop social skills only if you are able to feel their emotions so one needs to have the personal competencies to develop the social competencies interesting isn't it emotional intelligence has a lot of significance in education let's compare iq with eq though iq is still given importance during admissions and recruitments still it is eq that helps people work effectively in teams and succeed most of our professions demand good team members or team leaders which is an important component of emotional intelligence another big significance of emotional intelligence is that it can be learned and developed whereas iq is an inborn ability so as we can see the scale tilts towards eq the objective of eq is not merely scholastic achievement but training the child for life iq may ensure success in school however eq or emotional intelligence can help in becoming successful in life thus as teachers we need to be aware of developing emotional intelligence in our students one way of doing it is conducting group activities and using cooperative learning teaching techniques these group activities help students learn to accept diverse peers 
deal with their own emotions as well as those of others in order to achieve the common group goal. Since EQ helps develop tolerance and sensitivity, it becomes a very important ability which needs to be developed in the young generation. So this was all about emotional intelligence. These are the references used to create this video. Do check out the first link for activities you can conduct for your students to develop their emotional intelligence and other interesting resources. You will find the links to these websites in the description box given under this video. Please watch my other videos on cooperative learning. The links are shown on the screen. Hope you liked the video. Please like and share it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching my video.